from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. Glad you're with us tonight. We are talking about homelessness and a bill that was just passed in the legislature that has been it's been come to be known as the bill that would criminalize homelessness we're going to talk about that bill talk about its impact and happy to have with us a full house this is the most people we've had on this show since the pandemic we have three people so i want to thank everybody for being here we have lindsey cranks she is the co-founder of open table nashville um india pungarcher right well done and thank you. And Kayla Phillips. And Kayla, you are impacted um, in a very specific way by this bill, and we'll talk about that. But Lindsay, let me start with you. Mm -hmm. Just, okay, so what we're talking about is Senate Bill 1610, House Bill 0978. Um, it, it, it came to be known as the bill that would criminalize homelessness. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what does this bill do specifically? So the first part of this bill makes certain kinds of camping on interstate um, kind of berms or right-of-ways a Class C misdemeanor. But what is incredibly problematic about this bill is that the second part of the bill makes sleeping and camping on any kind of public property across the state a Class E felony. Now, it does that by amending an old law, so the Equal Access to Public Property um, Act from 2012. And um, a Class E felony, if you want to understand the impact of that, you can get up to six years in prison, a $3,000 fine, and the loss of voting rights just for sleeping or camping on public property. So it's an incredibly harmful bill, incredibly misguided in its approach to addressing homelessness. And this has passed, is that right? This has passed in the House and Senate, and it's now sitting on Governor Lee's desk for him to sign. And what... what there's a big push to try and get him not to sign it, Huge right? Huge push, so yes. Talk about that. So we've joined with a lot of other statewide groups like the ACLU, the National Association of Social Workers, and other mental health groups, um, and over 300 faith leaders and faith communities and dozens of nonprofits to try to get Governor Lee to veto this bill. We feel like it's very misguided. It does nothing to... Um, end or solve homelessness, it just further perpetuates homelessness by giving people, you know, charges that it's very hard to get out of. When you have a felony, it's very difficult to get employment and housing. So this really just prolongs homelessness and exacerbates it. And before I move on, just so we understand, okay, so what you're talking about, there are two parts to the bill. Is there a part of this bill that would make it illegal to, I guess, panhandle in the sense of going up to a car and trying to get money on a on an interstate off-ramp. Is that part Originally of this bill? Originally it was. So last year when they tried to pass this bill, we were able to defeat it. Um, and last year there was a part about soliciting. This year it's been amended. So that part has been taken out. And we're really thankful for that because it would have impacted contributor vendors and others. So um, that's a small good thing, but this bill is still incredibly problematic. Kayla, uh Tell me a little bit about your story. How, how, how might this bill, how would this bill impact you? This bill would literally give me a felony. I've never really gotten in trouble with the law. I've been homeless since I was 18. So it would just make it hard to get into house and, you know, try to get back on my feet. So you've been, you're homeless right now. You've been homeless since you were 18. Mm -hmm. So where do you sleep at night? I stay at Old Tent City off of Hermitage Avenue. Old Tent City, and and this bill, have you followed this? I mean, so what? How, how? What? What will you do if it passes? I don't know. I'm lucky enough that somebody helped me get a car, so we'll be traveling and sleeping in the car. Mm -hmm. But other people are less fortunate. You know, they don't have that. So I don't. I'm gonna keep fighting for them. You know, even if I do get into housing, no matter what, I'm gonna keep fighting for them. Mm -hmm. And I'll, we'll talk to some more to you, so that's, that's fascinating. India, how many people are in Kayla's shoes? Uh, that's a great question. Um, the only really reliable um, or regular number we have is from the pit count each year, so this point in time count where outreach workers and volunteers go out every year on one single night to count how many people are experiencing homelessness um, across the country. But um, over the past few years, um, we don't have the numbers from 2022 yet, but there's consistently been just under 3,000 people experiencing homelessness on any given night in Nashville. Um, but we're trying to push uh, communities to look at that number a little bit differently because, again, we know that that's how many people are experiencing homelessness on one single night. 
but homelessness is an experience that people transition in and out of. So maybe someone's outdoors one night on the night of the count, but maybe they're not. Maybe they scraped it together enough money to get a hotel room. Maybe they're in an emergency shelter one night. Maybe they're couch surfing one night. And so a few years ago, uh, Open Table uh, put together an estimate that said a more accurate picture is that there's about 20,000 people that experience homelessness in Nashville over the course of a year. So we feel like that's a much better estimate um, and a better number to have in mind when we're trying to think about how many people are experiencing homelessness. And Kayla, I think people are fascinated to hear from you because there are all these things we hear, you know, homelessness mm -hmm. is because of this or that. And I don't know how comfortable you are sharing your situation. Mm -hmm. Don't do anything you don't want to do. But what if somebody says, why are you why are you in this situation? What 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 do you say? Me and my fiance, we always call it unforeseen circumstances. He's been homeless since he was eight. He ran away. I've been homeless since I was 18 because I left my home because of abusive family. Um, I've been on the street since trying to get back on my feet, but Section 8 has the housing list and I barely got my voucher. So we're on that road to getting housing. But until then, we're stuck on the streets. So what about Section 8? Explain that. I got my voucher a couple months ago. Open Table's been helping me. Salvation Army helped me get the voucher. Um, I'm just waiting on a place. It's making it hard because I got two, two wonderful dogs, and it's hard to get into housing with dogs, yet, let alone one, you know? I've got two, but that's why. And you're out there. What would you communicate to people that is the biggest misunderstanding or one of the biggest misunderstandings that people do have? We're not all bad people. We're not. You know, you have the bad apples of the bunch, but there's nine out of ten, we're good people. And if someone said, go to the mission, you know, why, why, why not go to the mission? You if, know, if you've got people like me that have animals, you've got people that's in a relationship that they have codependency issues, but they're together, they don't want to split up. You got people, you know, that just doesn't want to go because they treat them bad or mental health issues. You know, that's the main reasons. And so now you are where you are. Wow. The sponsor of this bill is Senator Bailey. He said, um, when you hear those who have opposed this bill say that we're criminalizing the homeless, that's not necessarily so. It was just a tool in the toolbox to make sure they understood that we are serious about trying to move those off state property and now off public property. Um, that's a quote in a News Channel 5 story from the sponsor. What, what, what about that? What, what do you say? I mean, we've heard some people say it's almost like he's wanting to move people to private property because it's actually a lesser charge to sleep on private property. So it's interesting that this bill has come up. You know, there's already laws on the books across Tennessee that prevent trespassing on every kind of property. This just makes the penalty worse. So he's giving law enforcement more tools to harass people um, and threaten people. Um, to move along when there's nowhere else to move to. Nowhere in our state right now um, does any district, any county have enough shelter beds or affordable housing units for the people that need it. This is a crisis. Even on the coldest night in Nashville, when the mission was completely packed, the overflow shelter was completely packed. They had to op open an overflow shelter for the overflow shelter, and that still wasn't enough. So. We have a shortage of places, yet the sponsors of this bill act like, you know, people are choosing to stay out. Well, there's a lot of things that impact someone staying outside that aren't necessarily choices, um, so. And where, it's interesting, what, where would someone go if, if this were to pass, in, in your opinion? And I'm gonna ask you, Kayla, the same thing. I'll, and, and you too, but what, where, where might somebody go? No idea. They have kicked this out of everywhere. They kick you out of everywhere. And what are you fearing, India? I mean, I think that's the question we're asking is, you know, to the bill sponsors or anyone supporting this legislation is truly, where do you want people to go? We don't have shelter beds that are accessible to everyone. If we do have the quantity, which in most areas in Tennessee we don't, and we don't have housing. So truly, we, you know, as outreach workers are the folks that are there with folks when, you know, police come and say, you know, you have to leave this camp, but they don't give them an alternative. So that's what we're asking and why we're opposing this bill is because truly, where do you want people to go? Um, and this bill doesn't answer that and doesn't provide any answers or resources to, yeah, where we should be.
Yeah, what else do you think yeah. is at play with this bill? I, I think it's speaking to a frustration people have. It, they're uncomfortable when they drive and they see um, homeless people uh, under a bridge. It's, it makes them uncomfortable. And, and so what do you think's going on with this bill and what, what needs to be done? You know, this bill, the story behind this bill is that Cookville tried to pass a very similar ordinance at the city level in 2020. 2020 was the year of the pandemic when we saw outdoor homelessness explode across the state and the country because of the economic downturn and because people had to leave shelters as they were distancing and um, trying to figure out what was going on. So there's visible homelessness everywhere. Cookville people cried out about the bill and they said this isn't just, it's not constitutional, they shut it down. So Cookville, um, the folks there gave it to their council member, Ryan Williams, who partnered with Paul Bailey in the Senate. And they said, we couldn't get this done at a city level, get it done at a state level. And so this bill is coming from a very misguided understanding about the causes of homelessness and the solutions to homelessness. We know what ends homelessness. It's affordable housing, it's support services, it's dedicated outreach that builds trust with people and helps them put the pieces back together and opens doors for their futures with them. Um, those are the things that end housing in a short, we could talk a lot more about what ends homelessness is housing. But um, this kind of punitive approach that just sees visible homelessness as a problem to disappear um, really doesn't understand the complexities of the issue. I'm surprised it started in Cookville. Do they have a big homeless problem? It's grown. The visible homelessness has grown. And, you know, we've had, we have affordable housing crisis situations across the state of Tennessee. Um, this is a policy issue, right? Ever since the 80s, we've been defunding housing on a federal level. Um, and we certainly haven't done enough at a state level or city level either to keep up with the demand. Um, so. Wow. All right, we're going to take a break, and that kind of sets the table for our discussion. What do you think? Um, happy to have you weigh in. There is the number, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. We'll take a break. We'll be back right after this.